Hi guys, Dr. Wendy Dearborn here from The Laws of Attraction in Action. That's thelawsofattraction.com and The Laws of Attraction in Action, the Facebook group. And really and truly, I like to think of it as a working group. Um, so that being said, today I just want to briefly touch on, hopefully I can move the phone. Oh gosh, is it going to fall over? Technology, I love it. I'm all, I'm all lean. I'm leaning. You see me lean. Well, I'm here though. Hey babes. Okay, so today I want to briefly touch on um, worrying, the pros and cons. In life, pros and cons, there are good things and bad things in everything in life, and I truly do believe this. Some things you've got to stretch a little bit to find the good, but there are good things and bad things in, in, in everything. So the pros and cons of worrying. So what I want to look at, first of all, is the pros of worrying. Are there any benefits to being worried? Well, in reality, there are benefits to being worried. And the major benefit that you get from worrying is something is being drawn to your conscious attention. Something is being drawn to your conscious attention that needs to be addressed. And it's not something that needs to be addressed, you know, like 10 years from now. It's something that needs to be addressed now. And this is one of the the pros, one of the things, one of the assets that worry brings to you. It tells you that there is something wrong and action, immediate action is required. This is something that is vitally important. And so worrying, people, people will say, and I'm going to say this, that, believe me, I'm going to say this, worrying doesn't help. And in reality, there's truth to that statement too. It's, it might sound a bit like an, an oxymoron or it might sound, you know, convoluted. Worrying doesn't help and it really doesn't. Again, just so we're clear, the pros, what worry does for you is bring into your conscious awareness that there is something that you need to do. There's some action that needs to be taken, you know, it, for whatever situation and it's action that is based on how you are feeling it's action that needs to be taken now okay so that's the pros for worrying the cons well there's a whole list of cons that literally go with worrying now does worrying help you no it doesn't it does tell you something though worrying doesn't help you because what that does once once you have a worry and you continue on in that vein it won't help you because all your energy is focused on um, hoping and praying that the thing that you don't want to happen, you're hoping and praying that the thing that you don't want to happen, happens. You know, And so your energy is all spent, it's spent and it's focused and it's tunneled on, onto this thing. Well, the reality is that um, energy will flow where your attention goes. So in the universal laws of, of, of attraction, you need then to change what your focus is, what, where your attention is, so that your energy can flow in that direction. I'm not saying it's easy, guys. But what I'm saying is that if you continue to worry, what will happen is the thing that you are worried about has a chance, you, you've exponentially up the chance of it manifesting for you. The other thing that worry does for you as a, as, as a con is it can manifest um, diseases and disorders in your life. Continuous worry actually triggers your adrenals. Your adrenals or your the, the adrenal glands release adrenaline. They also have things do things with cortisol for stress and all this jazz. But anyway, they they re, they release adre, uh, adrenaline. Adrenaline is designed to be used instantaneously. Like I need to jump over that wall, you know, or I need, I need to hit something. I need to whatever it is. It's meant I need to run. Adrenaline is used so that your body can move on all cylinders and move quickly, okay? This is what adrenaline does. It allows the brain to think with clarity and to see things and da-da-da-da-da-da-da, stuff that you wouldn't, wouldn't normally do in everyday life. Worry can seriously cause the body to 
produce adrenaline that doesn't get used and then the body has to absorb it some way and it is my personal belief it's my personal personal belief that many diseases and disorders stem from this unused adrenaline or adrenaline that has to be used some way in the body stress as I believe it to be is for me the number one killer people talk about all of this and you know high blood pressure and da 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 and all of da, 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 da. stress stress is that silent killer that's taking people down and some people it takes them down quick but for me it creates these um these uh, chronic oh i was looking for the word these chronic diseases and disorders so okay so that being said as a con worry can create disorders and illnesses in the body it is my personal my personal belief my soul belief as well as my professional belief that once you realize that you are truly worried about something you can then consciously consciously make the choice to move your your viewfinder lens to begin the process of asking yourself, number one, maybe, okay, what does it look like not to be worried about this? And that's one, one question. The other question is, what is it that I am wanting to happen in this situation? Well, I don't want to lose my money. I don't want to lose somebody. I don't want to blah, 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 blah. All the don't want to's, right? And I get that. Okay, what does it look like for you to find resolution with the situation as it is as it is what does it look like to find some resolution what does it look like for you to be mm, in harmony with the fact that you can't control the situation what does it look like and here's where I want to go to use your energy to create something that you truly want to happen you see, when you're focused on all the, all the negatives of what's, what you don't want to happen, again, this is the thing that you'll draw to you. So my thing is, why not take that energy and picture in your mind, use your imagination, picture in your mind, your inner mind, what you want to happen, and then marry yourself to it. And for those of you who don't know me, when I say marry yourself to it, I'm literally talking about your five senses. Marry yourself to it by engaging your senses. You don't want to, um, I don't know, you don't want to lose your spouse, whatever it is that you don't want to happen. The antithesis of that is you want to stay with your spouse. You want to keep your home. You want to keep your, you know, just be joyful, whatever it is. This is where you focus. And then you marry yourself to it. What does it feel like for you? What does it look like for you to be joyous? Does it look like you? You're laughing, you're filled with merriment. What does it look like? And then what does it feel like for you to really be the embodiment of the joy that you want to experience? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? And when you can do that, you can keep your focus here. You can keep your focus here. And guys, let me just say this. When you are actually clear on what you want to happen, it's also another option that you have. It's also easier then to let go and allow your chosen God, to let go and allow your chosen deity, to let go for me and allow God. It makes it very difficult to let go and allow God or your chosen deity when you are in this negative swirl, when this, this dark cloud is all around you. Now, guys, once again, I'm not saying that this is easy and I'd never say that it's easy because personal experience in life has taught me that it's not. But what I am here to tell you is, is it doable? Yes. And the thing about this is when you made the choice not to worry, when you've made the choice not to worry and this you've made in truth and it's honest and it's authentic, the universal creator known to me as God, whomever your chosen deity is, will assist you in that process. Will move people, places and things 
to assist you in whatever process you are asking for. So worry. There are pros and cons. I should, I should say this, for me, the biggest thing I think is there are more cons than there are pros. Once again, just to reiterate, the biggest pro is that worry is telling you that there is something that you feel needs to be done and it needs to be done immediately. Your subconscious is showing you this. Now, when you worry about other people, you have all the stuff that it will do to you. It can impact your health. It can create what's going to happen. It can, it can assist what you don't want to happen in happening. It can do all of that. Everything that I just spoke about. When you spend time worrying about other people and what's going on. for, And I really mean worrying about other people. You know, are they going to get kicked out? Is it blah, 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 blah. You know, when you're crying and you're doing all this stuff. When you spend time doing that, what happens is... You are assisting them. If they're having issues, you are assisting them in their issues. You are feeding that energy. And I know a lot of people don't believe me, but it's true. You are feeding that energy. You know, energy likes energy. It's like ma a magnet. It will attract. So the time that you spend worrying about somebody and what's going on for them, you can do them a huge favor and see them where they want to be. If it's success that they are after, if it is financial wherewithal, if it's being in the ideal relationship, if it's having a healthy body, whatever it is, this is where you see them. Within, within um, the metaphysical realm and the, I, I say, new, new, thought, new thought ministry, that's called, that's what we call holding the space. Seeing you as it is that you, that you, that, that, that the person wants to be. If it's ill health that they have, you see them as being healthy. And I'm not talking about giving lip service. I'm talking about seeing them with your inner eye. You see them as being healthy. I mean, you see them running in the field or doing whatever it is, you know, in the sun. They're running in the field and the wind blowing and all this stuff. See them. Do that. If it's if 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 they're looking for um, if they're looking for for uh, uh, um, you, you you know if they want to be if they want to be in TV they want to be in theatre if they if they want to be rich see them being that yes a visual and that's right thank you Barbara yes a visual you have to see the visual you have to see the visual and just as a little FYI here just as a little FYI prayer is part visual, it's part affirmation, and part gratitude. It's three parts. Many people just do the affirm, many people just ask. And even with that, they're not asking right. You have to, you have to ask in a way that you already have it. And if you're asking for something, if you ask for it, it kind of implies that you don't have it. So really and truly, Prayer is all about saying thank you for what you have, seeing the visual and using your words to affirm that. And it's the same thing with worrying. It's the same thing when, you, when somebody is going through something and you're feeling for them. You're truly feeling for them. It's about you utilizing the, the, the inner resources that you have to see them where you want them to be. And as we say in the metaphysical community, you hold that space. You hold that space without reservation. You hold that space. It doesn't matter if, you know, you turn around and the next thing, you know, you hear they're in hospital and the doctor's like, clear, patel, you know, and they're trying to hold the space. Hold the space. Hold the space. So worrying, can it help you? Yes, it can. It can show you what you need to do. It can truly show you what's wrong and need, what you need to do, it brings to your, your conscious awareness what's going on for you. Can it be detrimental to your health personally? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. It can tear you down. Should you use your energy differently? It's my personal belief. Yes, you should. As a choice expert, and the, the, the first law of the laws of attraction is choice, for me, yes, yeah. 
Can you worrying impact somebody else's ability to get what they want in life? Yes, it can. Can you also impact somebody else's ability to get what they want by not worrying, but by holding the space or seeing them where, where they say they want to be? Yes, you can. You can do this for you. You can do this for others. Worrying after you know what you are worried about, worrying has no purpose other than to tear you down. Worrying is about encouraging you to take action, inspired action now. That's the purpose of worrying. Outside of that, it becomes toxic. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. Bob, I hope you're doing well, darling. I hope all's going well in your world. Outside of that, guys, don't worry. Get clear on what you truly want. Focus your energy there. Focus your energy on your intention and your attention. Use your attention to, um, to allow your intention to be made manifest. So outside of that, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. I hope you have an awesome day. I didn't say this, it's a lovely day in Las Vegas. I think winter's here. Although, you know, I miss short sleeves and stuff. But I think winter's here. It's a little cool here today. It's a little cool. But outside of that, a glorious day. It's a blessed day. I'm alive. I am doing what I want to do. And so it's a blessed day. I hope you have an awesome day. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Until next time. Love you too. Bob, say hi to John. Give him a hug and kiss for me. Peace. Bye.